So uh, the next talk will be uh, Jennifer Claudio. A few people uh, know her very well. She's been uh, frequently contributed to Doug over the last 15 years. And uh, she teaches at Oak High um, School in, um, in San Jose, California, and is currently on leave working at NASA Ames and a lot of lots of projects uh, dealing with um, data and genes and and uh, and probably will be back at Ohio at some point in time. But I would like to tell you a story, um, a parallel story to all of this, which you may know or you you, you may not have um, realized. Uh, there are five talks on this conference, which are literally mentored by by Jennifer Cordy. Um They are. Oak High um, has become a silo of people interested in typography, interested in tech, and how that relates to other areas of interaction with um, human beings. And, uh, and it's a real nice development. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank Jennifer personally for this. Um, it's lovely to see it happen. And with you, Reventing a youth chess woodworker. Thank you, Paolo, for that kind introduction. And to the audience, I do want to apologize on behalf of the con of the conference committee. Where this year we've just had a few blips and hiccups, and we've got different permissions from what we had in the past. And so there's been commentary coming in about how the audience hasn't been able to interact with the panelists and the host. And so uh, on behalf of the conference committee, I apologize for that feeling. We're working on putting up a few methods for interaction and to allow conversations going so that Tug can be the interactive conference that people who attend this actually look for. Um, so thanks for bearing with us and thanks for your patience in, in participating in Tug 2022. So with that, um, today I present to you revamping a youth chess workbook using latex packages. And as Paolo has mentioned in his introduction, many of you know me from being an absolute non-tech latex user to slowly starting to use things here and there through a variety pack of exploration. And because of the joy involved with it, of course, as he mentioned, I, I do have students who are also presenting um, in this year's conference as well. So revamping the youth chess workbook, once again, my name is Jennifer Claudio, and uh, we begin. Like many things, the, it comes with a story. And this story begins in 2005, where I had recently moved to San Jose, and I was hired as a chess instructor for the academic chess program. The program was founded in 1999, and it wanted to introduce kids to chess in an entertaining way as an after-school enrichment program um, not necessarily as the high stakes competition that a lot of chess programs are. Because of its accessibility, it became very popular in the underserved neighborhoods of San Jose. And so this program grew, uh, grew based on that. The center image shows um, an illustration of the founder, Eric Hicks. And this pawn here on the right just shows some of the other, other illustrations that were used within the, um, within the books. So this here is the cover of an egg book. So the way that academic chess works is that there is a progression of levels, eggs, snake, lizards, gators, and finally our advanced students are known as the monsters. Um, but this book here is rather drab looking even on the front and I would hold it up for you except I was having vid video issues as you heard. Um, but we can open the book and luckily I've got a capture for you for that. And even though the outside of the book was a little bit drab, the inside is okay, um, but the problem is that because there is not an original digital image that was saved by the founders or the original creators of this, when you look closer, you see that you have a loss of quality in these images. So um, you've just got this, this function of reproduction on a copy machine over and over and over, and you lose quite a bit of that quality. So I just highlighted exercise five, and you can see how it looks where you can see the graininess and the other problems that, um, that, are, that are indicated. So the initial thought is if only these books looked cleaner. 
So just because it's a program that serves underserved and inner city areas, doesn't mean it has to have a, a grungy feel to the books. We do want them to look nice and clean and professional. Um, but that was back in 2005. Um, I was an instructor for only a couple years thereafter, but I stayed affiliated with the company for our youth chess tournaments until 2021, when there was many closures that happened due to the, the COVID situation. Um, and since that time, I, we have not gone back to having in-person tournaments. Uh, and I do want to point out these were youth chess tournaments that were unrated because we did want children to explore the joys of chess. Um, and if they found themselves talented, then they could uh, pursue competition through some of the private coaches. All right, so the story then continues from 2005 to 2016. So there's a little bit of a, a gap time in there. And I want to point out in 2016, TUG was held in Toronto. Toronto might have hosted the most outings of all of the TUGs that I've attended. Um, we, had, we had several. And so this, this picture here just shows the boat crews that we had. Um, but, but like I said, there were several outings that happened in Toronto. And so I look forward to the day when TUG can be in person again. So although we have so much more worldwide interaction on these virtual platforms, I do feel like it loses some of the quality of interactions we get when we're in person. But anyhow, continuing with the story, um, I met a person named uh, Christian there from Quebec, and I had just given a talk about justified tech. So the way that different uh, softwares and engines handled justified tech. But Christian asked me, would I be giving a future talk? And I didn't know at the time, um, but I said, you know, I'll consider it. So during one of the outings, we went out to a library. There was a Sherlock Holmes collection, and there was a chessboard set up. So of course, I thought, well, maybe I could give a talk relevant to chess. So after the outing, we come back later on, we're, we're talking and thinking. And, um, and then I, I enter this elevator. And so Christian and I are still talking. And I said, maybe I'll give a talk about chess and the chess markup and how to, how to generate a page in chess. Because I remembered that these workbooks were just so problematic looking. I just really wanted to fix them. So there's a third person in the elevator, and he says, well, definitely just use TechMate. I said, okay, so I'll use TechMate. Um, elevator, you know, it's a very short ride. It's only like a couple of floors, right? Um, and so I, I kind of let it go until the banquet. So now we're at the banquet in Toronto, and I'm sitting with my group of people there. And I say, yeah, you know, someone was talking about TechMate, and the others at the table tell me, oh, yeah, that's Federico. I said, oh, okay, Federico. Um, so now I have his name, I can look him up later on. Uh, many of you will notice that you recognize yourselves in this photo. Might have been the last time several of us saw each other. And uh, I apologize to you if you feel that this is an unflattering photo of you. But I, I believe that we're all, um, we're all in good company and appreciate each other for how and what we are. But I just wanted to share that photo with you uh, for some of you to recognize yourselves and reflect on that good time that we had there. Okay, so we left off on saying that people were telling me this is Federico. Um, yeah, so now, five years later, August 2021. So now, remember that the original time this started was like 2005. It is now August 2021. Um, it's right after last year's tug when I started thinking about this year's tug, and it seemed like a good idea at the time because. Uh, I was taking leave from my main job as a high school science teacher. I was working a new, um, a new job as bioinformatics intern. Work hadn't picked up yet. I had plenty of time, right? So I finally do a web search, and I find this user's manual that's dated uh, 2006. Oh, gee, there was a little bit of a lag time there, but hey, better late than never. Uh, um, and I, I go through, and I take the information from Federico's uh, user manual, and I plop it in just to make sure that I'm actually able to do this. And lo and behold, I get a nice output. And I say, hey, this is totally possible. Um, and so I was very thankful for that. And knowing that it was possible working in the overleaf environment, as some of you might recognize the side-by-side -side display, knowing that it's possible, it's now February 2022, uh, where I'm beginning this project. And so, of course, I entered the Opera House game 
just to make sure that I'm able to create uh, a layout in the way that Federico originally had with his example. So here we see the output or rather the input used in order to create that display. So it's using an algebraic notation and there's little tags for white player, black player, um, the event itself and so on. So the TechMate has excellent documentation for those who are interested in typesetting with chess. Uh, TechMate 2 uses the SCAC chess engine and that allows following of moves and animations. But at this point, it's much more than what I needed for this purpose. My only goal is to regenerate at this point a page of that chess workbook. Um, so I don't actually need all the animations, even though they are very nice. I had to tour a few other chess packages. This just involves web searches, just the classic search of keywords and looking up what these are, what they do, how they work. Uh, found SCAC by Torben Hoffman. And that one there was the one that allowed the, the animation. ChessFSS and Chessboard. And special, special thanks to Ulrike Fischer for her contributions to that, or rather creating that package, I should say. And then uh, Martin Tolma's board generator. But ultimately I went with Chessboard uh, because it, it just served the purpose that I needed for creating these figures. So quick note on chess notation, there's a, without getting too technical, I just want to give a brief description. Um, there's a descriptive notation where the pieces are referenced by the ranks and their relative positions. So there's a white facing name and a black facing name. So for example, you'll see, um, you'll see the notation for uh, queen rook one, Queen Knight one, Queen Bishop one, and so on uh, from the black view in, the, in my top row. Whereas if I'm looking at the bottom row, I see the white notion, Queen Rook one, Queen Knight one, and so on uh, all the way through King Rook one. So it's a descriptive notation. And this one fell out of favor or standard uh, probably in 1940s, 1944, uh, when FIDE, the International Chess Organization no longer recognized it. Uh, there's also the algebraic notation. There's a short algebraic and a long algebraic. This one here puts squares on a, on a coordinate system. So your lower left is A1, where your ranks are one through eight. Your ranks are your horizontal rows and your columns um, are, go from A through H. Um, or one, sorry, your, yeah, what did I say? Your ranks go from one through eight and your files go A through H. Um, and so when we, when we used to teach this in academic chess, we would say that every square has a first name and a last name. The first name is, um, is gonna be your file and your last name is gonna be your rank. So that's the algebraic notation. And you have a Forsyth Edwards notation where each piece of the board is divided into the files once again sorry, the ranks once again. And then the piece location for an end position is then noted. So you've got your rook here um, in that first position, hence the R, and it's a lowercase r because it's a black piece. You have six spaces, hence the number six, and then the lowercase k to denote the black king. In the next line, you see the number two. So you see the number two, uh, followed by capital R to indicate the white rook, um, and then the optional five to indicate five spaces that remain with no pieces in them. This is optional. Sometimes it's, it's uh, simply omitted to indicate that there's no space there. So you've got your three notations, descriptive, algebraic, and Forsyth Edwards. Just a few examples. Um, of course, it's nice to show images. This is a book, The Pleasures of Chess. It belongs to my father. Uh, it's signed by George Koltanowski. Um, Kulti was a local favorite and columnist, I believe. And here you actually see uh, the book describing the opera house game in descriptive notation. So this book here, and come back here, mouse. Uh oh, uh oh, mouse. Oh, oh. And 
here we see the next book, um, 500 Tarot Can Miniatures. Uh, not that many people play the Tarot Can, but this one here shows descriptive notation of um, short mini games. And you can see how you've got the E4, C6, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And here you see a Forsyth notation where you've got end where you've got an end product that's being described that can be fed into um, a display generator or, or onto a board, onto a physical board later on, if you were, say, interrupted during a game or such. Okay, trying to get my mouse to track down here. Hmm, why doesn't it want to go there? Okay, fine. So to do what I wanted to do, I needed to begin with a single figure from within the workbook. I just had to make sure that I would be able to do this in the first place. So here we are, start with the figure. And so I go with um, the chessboard package. It's using the Forsyth Edwards notation. And so as I had described, you see the rook, the black rook, one space, black bishop, black king, lowercase k, two spaces, lowercase, oh, why are there two kings on this board? Um, and a rook over here. I don't know why I have two kings here. It's probably just a mistake, but I'm just showing you how the board looks anyway. All right, and then here we've got our pawns, our queen pawn, queen another pawn, uh, and notice in this one here, it omits the two. That's something I'll have to go back and fix. There is something here though, that because it's a workbook where the pieces are described as, uh, whereas the puzzle or the figures, I should say, where the figures are described as a mate in one set, they're all gonna be white to move. I don't actually want this piece here that indicates um, it's white's turn to move because it's implied for all of them. So uh, to remove that, we just have to include the tag show mover equals false, and now it is gone. Okay. If you remember the original page, that one there uh, showed a three by three grid of figures. And so I needed to be able to create an organized grid. Um, if I wanted to actually type that the other pages of the book, I would really need uh, to get in depth with web searches and Barbara Beaton messages about float placement. But at this point, I'm really not compelled to do the rest of the book because I'm no longer affiliated with that company. Um, so at some point, and it also leaves me a little wiggle room. If I need to talk in the future for tugs, then maybe I'll, I'll tackle that project. Um, there's, always, there's always more to do. And there's always more to explore. Here I show you an example of uh, um, the middle of the page where I've got three, uh, three of the puzzle, I keep calling them puzzle, but three of the exercises that have been laid out. Here's my input for it. And so I went with uh, just um, tabular settings with a defined size. And then of course, once again, you see the, the notations. As mentioned earlier, I work in the overleaf environment just because it's convenient for me. Um, I like that it's web-based. I, I, it, it was just my gateway drug. And so it was just very convenient for me. Uh, so here it is in the overleaf environment. And so I, I like that I can generate side by side. For those who are bothered by the small error messages that I have, um, sorry, that's just how life was. Um, but it compiled and it looked the way that I wanted. And as you can see in the before and after, at a distance, everything looks, you know, kind of the same, right? Um, but if you if you zoom in, you'll see that you've got a nice crisp output here, whereas you didn't have that in the old uh, in the old textbook copy. So, thank you for your attention. Um, your comments will be welcomed. I apologize that I was a little rushed in producing these slides, but I felt like if I didn't present this year at Tug. Um, then it would be another six or 12 years before I actually presented this. So thank you for indulging me and I'd be happy to take any questions.
Oh, yes. I set up a slide that I didn't set up very well um, because I'm having trouble with my mouse, in fact. Um, I can come back to that after I field questions if, if there are any. Jennifer, I have one question, that, uh, which is uh, have been with me for a long, long time. Are there a wide variety of fonts for representing the chessboard itself, or or the ones that work with tech are sort of a, a, of a limited? Uh, oh, bit... um, that question is out of my scope. I have no clue if there's. If there's fonts for chess, uh -huh. yeah. So unfortunately, completely out of my scope. I, I really have no clue, but there might be someone out there who knows. I, have seen, I, have I didn't. Un I didn't understand the question. Well, there are some. There are some boards. You know, you you see some of um, in, in the chess books. I I'm working with uh, with a grandson, and I have bought him a few chess books. And there are some which are exquisitely designed and where you can identify the pieces very well. And, and some where you can barely make the difference between a queen and, a, and, 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 a, and some other pieces. And uh, so that is dependent on the font, which is used to generate the board. Yes. And are there, um, you know, I have never looked into the availability of fonts to to do this um, to do the printing of the boards. Are is there a wide variety of them, or is this? Um, well, there are a numbers around ten to twenty chess fonts are in in Tesh Live, I would say. In Tesh Live, uh huh. You, I look at the um, chess font gallery. In the en passant package. Uh -huh. There are also funds are prepared for for chess. That's good. None of, none of the books that I have looked at seem to be have seem have to be generated by by tech. Um, at least the surroundings of it. It could be that the boards are, but the, the surroundings of the book do not look like that. Well, most will probably use. Um, there are some open type chess fonts too, and I can use this yes, or from chess base or so. Yeah. But there are some fonts you can look uh, in en passant package, it's called. Yeah. Simply look at my packages, all chess fonts are from me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Ulrike. laughs> this, this will give me a, a talk for future, right? <laughs> Stay um, tuned for Tug 2023. And Jennifer, and you can, there's a, you, you don't have to repeat the show mover command all the time. Oh, you can okay. set it generally for the whole document. Oh, well, now <laughs> I know that. Thank you. <laughs> and this is why I present, right? So I can get this uh, information. <laughs> Are there other questions um, that you see, Paolo, or? Looks like you have a hand, oh. You have attendees with a hand up. Are you able to acknowledge them? Let's see, Kave. Are you? Um... Jennifer, are you able to see his comments in the in the Q and A area? Um, yes. <laughs> so, so I, I see comments. One's from my father. That's Dennis Claudio. He said that not many people play the Caracan, but some of those who do are great. Yeah. And then he says, uh, serious chess players don't want funny fonts. Say thank you, Ulrike, for me." And um, and yeah, Kaveh has his hand up. Are you able to? Uh, Acknowledge him so that he may ask his question as a host. Uh huh. So let yeah. me upgrade Kavi so that uh, he can he's, ask his question. He's typed his questions. How are the pieces generated and what you showed? Um, it depends on what you mean by that. 
so I just uh, I just entered the Forsyth notation. And so the, the actual piece generation, I'm not sure that I understand the nature of that question. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Hey, Hi. good to hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, the Zoom was doing all kinds of things, and I'm a panelist now. And we can see you, too. So uh, for the first time, I can see you. <laughs> so so um, well, thank you. Very uh, uh, d d d d entertaining uh, uh, presentation. Uh, Jennifer, so you talked about fonts, and and so we said all these fonts are available. So right now, how is that generated? So you must have a chess font in there, right? Uh, oh. Otherwise, how are, how are these? Where is this coming from? All those those um, chess um, pieces. Oh, you ask these questions like I actually know. Uh, I cut and pasted most of what I did, and um, the only thing I did was change the the piece input but let's see so um yeah i just okay, call so it youth packet chessboard and i don't know what font i actually use huh? the font, the Rika, font is, Rika probably knows the answer very well <laughs> the font is kept new and it has been provided it's a uh, type one's version of a font that was provided together with this cat package and it right. is in tech life Right. So type one font, similar okay. as every else other font, only that it has square square mm -hmm. fields and, and, and chess in it and not characters. Oh got it. Got it. Thank you very much. Yeah, clear, simple font. Right. Well, thank you for that too. <laughs>